Hey, this is Mr. Buffington, and we're looking at sample and predictions today. So we'll be taking sample sizes, looking at them, and seeing if they're biased or unbiased, making sure that they're legitimate. And then we'll be looking at making predictions based on samples that we have. So a sample is when you take a poll or check with a group of people and use the percentage or proportion to make predictions on larger populations. We'll see that an example of that later with actually the math. But just a quick example that comes to mind is during election season, you'll oftentimes hear the, the statistics coming from the polls. And that is that they, they don't ask every single person who's voting how they're going to vote. Instead, they take a random sample to see how the random sample pans out. And then they make predictions based on that random sample. So again, you won't get a phone call every week probably asking how you're going to vote during election season, but yet they'll show on the news the percentage of how people are doing using these different polls. So a quality sample has to be as unbiased as possible. Obviously, everything has a certain amount of bias in it. But if I want to get the general feel about people, I want to ask a large general population. Here's an example of something that is, is definitely a biased example. If I want to get the feel of people about something sports related, like if I wanted to say, how many of you read Sports Illustrated? I wouldn't just ask people outside of a sporting goods store. Because most likely, those people coming out of a sporting store would be more likely, definitely weighted hev more heavily towards reading sports related material. So that would be an example of a biased sample. Here's another example of a biased sample. I want to know how many people would love the book that I wrote. So I ask my family who have read it. Think about this. Why is that biased? Well, obviously, my family members are probably, hopefully going to be um, pretty nice to me. And they'll say they loved it, even if maybe they haven't read it or, or maybe if they didn't like it so much. So asking your family members for something that you want to be objective is probably not as effective. So that would be one reason of why that would be biased. Here's an example of biased and unbiased. If I'm trying to predict how many um, girls or boys will be in my math class, a biased sample would be to check the population of boys and girls in a parenting class. More likely, there's going to be more females in a parenting class. I know when I went to high school, I took a parenting class, and there were two guys in it, and the rest were girls. So that would be a bad way to predict how many guys and girls would be in my math class. An unbiased way would be maybe to check the entire school population and get more of a general feel, how many male to female ratio or, or the male to female um, proportion. Um, and that would help you to get a little bit of an unbiased way to kind of predict how many students would be in a math class. Um, if you're checking the quality on an assembly line, uh, some biased ways would be to only check one person's product or to check only at one time of the day, or to check only the first products that were made. Those are examples of biased um, samples. An unbiased sample would be to randomly select at random times, and that way you get more of an overall feel of how the product is doing. If you're grabbing 10 products. You don't want to grab just the first 10. You want to grab 10 randomly throughout the day made by random people uh, at random times. And that would give you more of an idea of what's happening overall on the assembly line. So samples should be as unbiased as possible. When we have good samples, we can use those samples to make predictions about the future. And it's easy to do that. You just set up a proportion, and then you're done. Let me show you an example. In the school today, 150 students wore blue shirts and 72 students wore red shirts. If the total school population is 220, predict how many students in my class of 25 will be wearing blue shirts. So in this silly example that I've made up, everyone at school has either a blue shirt or a red shirt on. And I'm going to use that sample size of the entire school to make a prediction inside of my classroom. Whenever you're setting up proportions, you need to make sure to be consistent. The top would be the blue, and the bottom would be the total. 
So the total number of blue shirts, 150 out of the 220 total students. Total number of blue shirts in my classroom, I don't know, out of 25 students. So that's the, the population. I use blue on the top consistently, the total number of students on the bottom consistently. Now I'm ready to do a solve this using proportions. When we solve proportions, we use cross multiplying. So I'll be 25 times 150 and 222 times x. 150 times 25 is 3,750. Now I'll divide both sides by 220. This will get my x value completely by itself, which is what we want. So there's about 16.89 is equal to x. x is the number of students in my class wearing blue shirts. So I can't say there's about 16.89 students. I would say there's about 17 people in my class wearing blue shirts. That's my prediction based on the sample I took of the entire school. The sample was 150 out of 220. The prediction I'm making is that about 17 people in my classroom will be wearing blue shirts. So that's how a sample turns into a prediction, is using proportions. The other type of question that you can get using proportions or using a sample is a percentage. So here we go. A poll stated that 74% of all Mr. Buffington's statistics are made up. If he used 25 statistics in a class session, about how many of them were made up? So if I'm given a percentage, I could write that as a proportion, as a, a fraction, 74 over 100. But it's actually easier when you're given a percentage because all we're really looking for is what is 74% of 25? And when I get a question like that, I translate each part. 74% is 0 0.74. Of means multiplication, and 25 is 25. So all I have to do is 0.74 times 25, and that will give me 18.5. So I can make a prediction. About 19 of the 25 statistics that were shared were made up. All right, and it's an estimate. Whenever you're making a prediction about the future, you probably want to use the word about because it's not going to be exact. You're making a prediction based on a small sample size. You're making a prediction about something else. So that's basically all there is about sample size and predictions. Make sure that the sample is as unbiased as possible. Use proportions to make predictions. And if it's given in a percentage, just use multiplication to make predictions. Hopefully that lesson has been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.